Don't judge me, this is art! <laughs> These videos are not for children. If you are a children, then piss off. Hey there, I'm Vin Fuso, and today I'm gonna tell you how Danny DeVito saved It's Always Sunny in Philly. Now we all know Danny DeVito. The man has played a pivotal role in a lot of our childhoods. He was horrifying as the Pang one. He was the meanest man I'd ever seen in Matilda. He was quite possibly the greatest Brooklyn satyr. Satyr? Whatever. Put to film. The man had an impressive resume, and I'm not even covering half of that in the last statement. But I truly think that history might best remember him as Frank Reynolds. Who would have thought this accomplished movie star's greatest role would come past his prime on a TV show? It wasn't always that way, as the first season of It's Always Sunny didn't include Danny. The show's pilot season was a much more condensed version of the show. They were still going the extra mile with the edgy content and unruly characters, but the plots were very stationary, if that makes any sense. I feel like it might not. It felt minimized in how they went about telling their stories. Each episode only consisted of two or three locations, typically. And there wasn't, like, a, a whole lot going on. It was the dialogue that was funny or, or, or the scenarios that they'd find themselves in. But overall, it wasn't as effortful as the product that you see today. The show was a hit with a lot of viewers. However, it wasn't necessarily big enough to warrant a season two on its own. You see, while the show was hilarious, none of the people working on it were exactly a draw. In 2006, no one knew Glenn Howerton or Rob McKinley or Charlie Day. No, no one knew who they were. Their claims to fame before the show were That 80 Show and brief cameos in Law & Order, respectively. So in an effort to bring in more viewers, the FX network urged the show creators to bring in a bigger name. And when I say urged, I mean they basically told them that if they didn't bring in someone new, they'd cancel the show due to lack of funds. The writers, who were also the main cast members, however, were hesitant about including someone of note. They'd written the show in a particular way and felt like a major name stepping on set could compromise their creative process. They also were really into the concept of having the show be its own unique, neat little thing. And bringing in a star could jeopardize that. Hell, a star could potentially outshine their entire leading cast of unknowns. Maybe their inclusion would alter the show and have it center around them. Hey, listen, it happened with Family Matters. Urkel came right in. He wasn't even a name. Urkel came right in. Boom, that show was his from that point on. Maybe they'd want to make changes and their star power would force them to do so. What if this new guy came in and destroyed the natural chemistry the cast had already formed? These are probably just some of the thoughts that were going through their minds at the time. They were given a list of potential names, and the only one that seemed to fit the It's Always Sunny mold was Danny DeVito. Namely because he had already had an established history of playing notoriously slimy or otherwise despicable characters in movies and on television. Need I remind you that this man was the Penguin? But despite this, there's still a certain likability to the characters he portrays. Do I look suspicious? You love to hate him in a way. The characters he'd play typically were shitty people, but you'd always appreciate his performance. Which kind of matched the It's Always Sunny formula. The characters are fun to watch, but if you knew them in real life, you'd probably distance yourself from them. I mean, I probably wouldn't because I like being around people who give me stories to tell. But then again, that's also why I know so many shitty people. So, you know, it, 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 it's, a real, it's a real seesaw, teeter-totter kind of thing. Anyway, when Rob approached Danny with the idea to add him to the cast, he did so without a full blueprint of the character. But from what he did pitch, Danny liked. Although Danny was already interested in working with the rest of the cast, because as it turns out, his children watched and enjoyed the show's first season. But after this meeting, Danny was entirely sold on becoming a fixture in the series. And just like that, Frank Reynolds was born. I mean, in the real world, creatively speaking, I mean, time-wise, he would have to be born long before that. His inclusion into the show quite literally saved the series. When Danny did come aboard the project, he certainly wasn't the Madonna his resume would make you think that he could be. As a matter of fact, he often would ask for more directions from McKinley. I'm not saying his name right. I know, don't bother in the comments. I, I, I'm not good at talking. Here, this is my job. To quote Mac, and which is what I will be referring to him from now on, I'm, I'm sorry. To quote Mac, For me, I remember Danny DeVito came on in the second season of It's Always Sunny, which was 13 years ago. And he's a comedic icon and a hero of mine. And he asked at one point on set, how do you want me to say it? And I said, well, just say whatever you think is the funniest. And he said, no, I want you to tell me what's funny. And I remember going, you want me to tell you what's funny? He's like, yeah. 
You're the young person. And the reason I signed on to the show was because I want to stay fresh and relevant. And if I don't, then I'm just going to become a dinosaur. You're human. You could never be a dinosaur. That was a real learning experience for me. And as I continue to make the show, and then others, I've surrounded myself with young people. Oh, I'm sorry, that last part of the quote might have came from Kevin Spacey. I'm, my, my apologies. His name value and star power got many more eyes on the product. And he worked well with the rest of the cast. Not only did he not take away from the show, as was once feared, but he significantly added to it. He in a lot of ways felt like the missing piece of the puzzle that, at first glance, you may not have even known anything was missing to begin with. For me personally, the show doesn't quite feel complete until Frank shows up. Whether that was because the first season was just throwing everything at the wall and seeing what stuck, you know, getting your creative sea legs, or if it was because Frank was the perfect addition to the show. I couldn't really tell you, but I think it's probably a combination of the two. His relationship with Charlie really fleshed out both characters and created what I think is the greatest bond between any two characters in the show. We work very well together, okay? We're gruesome twosome! Gruesome twosome! His overall demeanor gave more reason and credence to why Dennis and Dee are so awful because they grew up under his wing. And his presence led to many, many get-rich-quick schemes that have gone awry. His deep pockets have led to the gang funding their greatest stupidity and giving us some of the greatest plots in the show. Although a friend brought up a really interesting point to me, and I can't help but think of it now. Frank's endless supply of money is really a MacGuffin. It's what's used to start and finish a lot of episode stories. And with Frank's seemingly endless mountains of cash, his inclusion into the series allowed the gang to get more and more ridiculous and find themselves on less and less realistic adventures. Which is great. It really helped the writing process out, I'm sure. And it allowed the show to evolve. But I think it would have been nice to see a little bit more of the gang pre-Frank. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love what he brought to the series, and I'm glad that he's now part of the ensemble. But it would have been nice to get, like, maybe two or three more seasons without Danny. Just to see the gang screw up in their ordinarily mundane lives just a bit more before Frank allowed them to fuck up in much grander, astronomical levels. I don't know. It's just something that was said to me that really got me thinking. So now I'm here passing that along to you as if that's my own words, but it's not. I'm, I'm a fraud. Oftentimes, It's Always Sunny is called Seinfeld on crack. And that's fair. But I think, like, before Frank came on the show, it was just Seinfeld. And then when Frank showed up, that, that's, that's when they got the crack. Am I making sense? Because if not, it might be the crack. Anyway, that's how Frank Reynolds, or more accurately, Danny DeVito, saved It's Always Sunny. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. I'm the Clown Prince of Crime, and that was the Prince of Personality, the Infuso. Or so he says. So if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too want to become a V-tard, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow the man on Twitter, because it's not stalking if it's on the internet, after all. <laughs> Join the fun by joining the Discord. If for some strange reason you want to show support, and I don't know why you would, and if you have a dollar to spare, head over to the SIJW's Patreon, where you can request videos, get exclusive content, and early access to scheduled videos. Or head to his PayPal, where you can buy the shirts. Oh, aren't those lovely? And just remember, if you're not tuning in, you're missing out. Yeah, yeah. Ah! <laughs>